Hey everyone, last week on the channel, I shared how I pack for documentary film travel shoots and some of my best tips to avoid luggage disaster. Now this week on the channel, it's kind of like a part two of that travel series, which covers strategies for your actual travel day when flying for a film shoot. In this video, you'll join me on my recent trip to Oklahoma City, where I traveled to film a Hulu documentary series. As I share seven pro tips for how you can save time, money, and reduce your own stress levels when it comes to travel day. So let's get into it. Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Austin Meyer. I'm an Oakland-based documentary filmmaker, National Geographic Explorer, and on this channel, I share the skills, mindsets, and lessons that have helped me on my journey as a documentary filmmaker. Over the past six years of working as a full-time freelance documentary filmmaker, I've had the opportunity to travel to amazing places in the world. I've been all over the US, from New York City to rural Illinois to LA to a military base in Kentucky. And I've also traveled internationally, from Zambia to Vietnam to Jordan and Iceland. When all of this started, travel days really stressed me out. I stressed about the safety of my equipment, the cost of all the travel, moving so much luggage around when I was traveling solo. And I just had this general feeling of, Am I doing things right? Is there a better way to do this? And for the most part, I didn't know because I was often alone and I didn't have anyone to learn from. But over the years, I've had so much experience and I've worked with a lot of others and I've started to pick up some tips that I think are really helping me feel more calm and confident on travel day. And here are seven of my best. The first tip is charge for travel days. Whether you are negotiating with a production company for your services or budgeting for a documentary or commercial project you're pitching, make sure that you advocate for yourself to get paid for the days you travel. When I was getting started, this definitely was not obvious to me. I thought, well, my client is paying for my flight. Why would they pay me additional fees to sit in a chair in the sky or in the car? But I've since learned, travel charges exist because time is money especially for freelancers. Travel for work is billable as work because when you are traveling, you can't book other work. This also goes for equipment. A lot of professionals who own their own gear rent it out, but when you are traveling, the gear is spending the day not working for you and nor can it be rented out for other productions. So when you're negotiating rates or budgeting for a job, you should know the norm, which is when people tie up the time of gear or crew, they pay for it. Now I get it, this isn't gonna happen every time, especially when you're just getting started, or at least it didn't for me. But again, this is a norm that most clients should understand. And as a starting point, the standard travel day rate is half the normal labor day rate. So if your normal day rate is $800 a day for labor, then it is typical that the travel day rate would be $400 plus travel day expenses like meals and ride shares. I've also heard from filmmakers who charge two thirds their day rate, which is awesome if you can get it. But no matter what it is, make sure you are charging for your time. And speaking of time, tip number two is leave plenty of it. Let's pass it over to Travel Day Austin and the GoPro vlog for this one. Plan to get to the airport very early, especially when you are traveling with a lot of gear to just leave room in the schedule for things that might go wrong. There's oftentimes people who aren't used to checking in so much luggage or just all the kind of things that come up when you're traveling with an inordinate amount of luggage and equipment. So just useful to get there early and not have that stress on your mind. I like to get to the airport at least two hours early and some airports make that three. I've never really understood the travelers who like to cut it super close, especially when you have a lot of equipment. So save yourself the stress and get there early. Which brings us to tip number three, getting to the airport. Vlog Austin, take it away. If you're gonna do a ride share, I'm gonna be calling either an Uber or a Lyft to make sure that you schedule the XL car. For some reason, this wasn't obvious to me until I scheduled <laughs> a uh, just regular Uber or Lyft and it came and had like no trunk space and I just had this mounds of luggage. So make sure you get that XL. Oh yeah, looks like we got our XL car. Whenever I can, I will also book my XL ride share the day before and schedule the pickup for a time that will get me to the airport nice and early. If you're like me, it can be easy to procrastinate on travel morning and you end up getting there late. So if you book in advance, now you have something or someone holding you accountable to get everything ready and get there when you intend to. Once you've arrived at the airport, it's time for tip number four. All right, thank you. Which, when I learned about this tip, was a big deal 
for my wallet, and that is to check luggage using media credentials. I'm gonna uh, have media okay. credentials. Have yes, I do. Yes, it's true. Most airlines have what are called media rates for checked baggage. A media rate is a discount offered to individuals or companies in the media and entertainment industry. Now, there isn't a standardized or fixed media rate that applies universally across all airlines, but the discounts are major. You typically pay a flat fee for each bag instead of the typical exponential charge for each additional bag. And the bags can be up to 100 pounds rather than the 50 pound weight limit for most airlines. Let's see what Vlog Austin paid for his four checked bags on Delta. So right there, I just checked four bags. And it came out to $170. And you said that was 170? Yeah, I have a receipt coming for you. Now, if that was a normal baggage check rate from a normal airline with no media credential, I mean, I'll put it on screen here, I'll do the math, but it would be a lot, lot more. Now, obviously not just anyone can go up to the counter and request a media rate. You have to have media credentials. If you work for a media organization, you likely have your credentials and ID, but if you're a freelancer like me, it can get a little bit trickier. Personally, I am fortunate that I can use a CBS News badge, which I got while working on a documentary for Paramount Plus, and I love how they use my 16-year-old driver's license photo for it. <laughs> but my recommendation is, if you are a freelancer, create your own media credentials. Boot up Photoshop or Canva and spend the half hour to make a legit looking credential. Get it laminated, get a lanyard, make it look official. And then print out the media baggage rules for the airline you are using so you are even more prepared. Because sometimes the people at the desk don't really know what you're talking about. The time you take to make the badge is well worth the money you're gonna save from it. Now, once you have checked your bags, tip number five is to get that TSA pre-check. I know it can be a hassle, but I encourage you to start that process. Isn't that right, Vlog Austin? It's not essential, but it's nice. Usually it's faster. And even when it hasn't been faster, I notice that when I forget to put TSA pre-check on my ticket and I go through the regular line, I'm much more likely to get them to have me open my bag and inspect the camera equipment rather than just kind of like passing me through. So, TSA pre. Smooth. No issue checking bags. No issue getting through security. Now it's just time to chill, get ready to travel. Tip number six is to pay for early boarding when possible. We've all been on flights where we are in that last boarding group and we hear the airline agent come on the loudspeaker saying, we are low on overhead space and we'll be checking the rest of your luggage at the gate. I swear that scenario, that scenario just strikes fear into my heart. No way you are throwing my FX6 luggage under the plane. So that's why when possible, I pay to board the flight early so that I can stash my carry-on and personal items into the overhead and not have to risk checking bags at the gate. And lastly, tip number seven is to take care of yourself. As documentarians, we are often traveling the day before a shoot. As a lifelong athlete, I know that the way you show up on game day is directly linked to your preparation and mindset the day before. I take that same mentality into filmmaking. Travel days can be long, they can be tiring, they can be stressful, and it can be very tough to bounce back from that right into being our most dialed in selves on the shoot day. So make sure that you are taking the time on travel day to eat healthy, stay hydrated, get sleep, relax, do what you gotta do to be in the best frame of mind to crush it the following day. We made it to Oklahoma City. Okay, we have made it to Oklahoma City. All the gear has come all the way. Now I got my luggage cart, which will probably hang on to until the morning, unless they come calling for it. Oh, gotta get this phone call. Thanks for coming along for the day. And thanks for coming along for this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed to the channel. And if you want to check out the video I mentioned that goes over everything I packed for this Hulu documentary shoot, click on this video right here. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, go out and tell some stories.